Hello, Chrissy Green here with part two of my rainy day uh, Photoshop editing on my image. Um, if you've seen image one, it showed you how I got my file from Lightroom into Photoshop and I cleaned up flaws and bits of dirt or whatever that was stuck to the background. Just made it ready to go on to the rest of the editing. Um, so the things that I need to accomplish to complete this image, I need to lay down a ground layer that will be the splashy puddles. I need to put in a frog on a rock and I need to add a layer of raindrops that I'm going to make myself from scratch and I'll show you how. It's just super super easy. Um, so I guess the first thing I'll do is lay down the ground. I went and found on Pixabay a free image that I'm able to use for commercial and I'm just going to go to place embedded and go to my download folder and look for it. Boo, 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 boo. So you can see I download a lot of things. Um, here we go. Rain. Just a, a generic rainy day. Lots of puddles. Uh, one thing that I you will notice is that this is shot at a different angle. This is more looking straight down at the ground, whereas my subject is not. So I'm going to adjust this by holding the control key. And you can see that when I'm holding control and I hover over an anchor, it lets me move just that anchor. And by pulling out at the bottom, but not at the top, I actually can change the perspective on this so that it, it gives it more of a shot at an angle kind of look that I wanted. I'll pull it down so we don't see the green. I can even squish it down a little bit. And then holding control lets me just manipulate the corners individually. I will say OK on that. Um, from this point, I played with the blend layers. I don't even recall what I might have picked the first time, but let's take a look at them. Darken isn't really the look I'm going for, and I'm just scrolling down to find one that will give me a natural sort of look. Alright, so I think out of all of these, screen looked pretty good. This one looks kind of nice too. Um, let's see. We'll go with screen for now. So I've got it in there. It's obviously needing some work because it's over my subject. I, it also seems to go a little high up the wall. Um, I can even lower the opacity just a little bit. I'm going to click on my layer mask icon and turn my brush back up to 100% and I'm just going to brush it off of my subject to start with. Get a brush that's big enough and a black brush on a layer mask is going to erase that image and a white brush will bring it back. So I don't even have to be 100% careful. Nothing is gone permanently uh, which is the beauty of a layer mask. Now if I hit X I get my white brush back. I can just kind of the smaller brush, just go back in and add it where it, you know, maybe I was a little too eager getting rid of it there. And the worst thing, um, the worst giveaway is when you have telltale halos around your subject and you want to avoid that. There we go, and maybe just reduce the opacity on that layer a little bit more. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm also going to just uh, get rid of it there where it goes up the wall in the back. Uh, when you're using your brush or just about any tool in Photoshop, if you click and then hold it, press the shift key, you can actually run right back and forth on your image and it will only go in a straight line. It will not go anywhere else. So anytime you have a horizon, whoops, that was just me hitting wrong buttons. Anytime you have a horizon and you want the line to be straight, just hold that shift key. Alright, so that's looking fairly good. If you want the um, you know, the little rain swirls to be a little more obvious, you can actually go into levels and adjust those. So pulling this one down is going to brighten up the highlights. You see they get really bright. The bottom one is going to darken the blacks, 
it's basically just giving you a lot more contrast in your image. The middle one is going to be your shadows, where you want those to fall. All right, so then the next thing I want to do is bring in my rock for the frog to sit on. So I'm going to place that image too. Here we go. This I also found on Pixabay, and it gives me a good variety. I actually really love this one. Um, I ended up going with the brown rock because the frog picture I found was the frog sitting on a brown uh, tree branch. So to save me time in editing, it's really easy to just um, choose a rock image that's going to match. Here we go. So I'm just going to erase the rocks I don't need. You could use a layer mask, but honestly, um, I already know what I'm using, so I don't have to worry about it about saving any of the old rock. I don't want them, and I know I don't want them. We'll give this a good little size here, something kind of natural. Let's say yes. You can use dodge and burn if you want to, you know, darken it up a little bit. Totally up to you. Let's bring in the frog. Now, I did not find a PNG a PNG, sorry, um, of a frog that I liked already cut out. I did find this little free tree frog. I just need to cut him out of the image. I chose him specifically because the shade of green I found was complementary in my image. So I'm going to use the pen tool uh, because it's my favorite tool for cutting things out. I'm just going to cut a little bit inside. I'm going a little quick on this just for the sake of time. I do have a video out there on how to use the pen tool, so if you check around my channel you'll find it. Um, as you can see I'm not even, be whoops, not even being very precise. Um, the frog is not my subject. He's just a little incidental creature. I'm even cutting off some of his back toes there. Um, because no one is really looking at the frog and he's going to be very small. Uh, because he's going on a brown rock, I'm just going to leave that to save some time because I can just sort of blend it in in the end. Uh, and again, I'm going really quick on this part. But I have videos, and you can find other videos as well, that will show you exactly how to use the pen tool. It's not a really difficult tool to use, but it does take a bit of practice. I don't think I liked it very much the first time I tried using it. All right, so there I've kind of got a roughed out selection of my frog. And I will mask it. And the reason I chose the mask is because I can adjust it after the fact. All right, so I'll zoom out. First of all, he's backwards. I need him looking up at my subject. He's really huge, so we're going to make him small. There we go. Similar to that. And then down here where you see the, the browns don't quite match, but that's okay. I'm going to use a soft... Actually, I'll use a brush because I've got a layer mask. So I'll use a soft brush. Maybe reduce the opacity a bit on that just so that it's not an instant erase. And I'll just kind of blend it in. And something along those lines there. All right, so now I've got my girl, my frog, my rock, my water. Um, the next video is going to show you how to make your very own raindrop overlay. Um, it's so easy. You're going to enjoy it. It's just a couple of quick steps in Photoshop to customize a brush. Then we're going to apply the brush in motion blur and we'll have instant rain. So please join me in video number three for that step. Thanks a lot for watching guys. Have a great day.